Welcome back everyone to Disco Elysium. You're here with Wayne Levy, otherwise known as Drax Craven, when well, let's go steal some speed. Well, let's see, actually, a quick thing. I just want to see if, ah, Miss, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Klosh is, um, present. Just making sure. I should go talk to Cindy about her skullness. Not measure head skullness, just regular skullness. Piss mm, and fuck the world send their best. <sighs> I don't believe it. I've never known those boys to have manners. The bemusement in her voice doesn't fully mask doesn't fully mask genuine tenderness. They seem to hold you in high esteem. They'll never be skulls, but but their hearts are in the right place. What are you trying to achieve being a skull? She throws you a conspiratorial glance, then presses her fingers to her lips and squints up at the sky as though straining to hear something in the distance. Have you noticed the quiet? Every so often you might hear a gunshot pierce the air somewhere in Jamrock, but in Martinez, no gunshots, no sirens. The people are languishing in boredom and complacency. This place is a sepulcher. We'll paint it red. We bring the raucous. We bring you the sirens. I see. So it really is just ruckus. Keep you on your toes. We raise hell so that you may not forget what it is. That's an interesting goal. I wouldn't exactly call it admirable, but... Oh. What's well, hiding in the turlet? Ooh, Commodore Red and Magnesium. Moss crawls on the bathroom tiles. No, actual moss. Oh, God. Looks like we found where Kuno's dad lives. Lieutenant nods, and the place comes with three months worth of utility bills. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna break in. Oh, easy peasy. Snip! The cutter goes through them like dead leaves. The links fall to the ground on the other side of the door. Don't let the quiet fool you. The beast is in there, somewhere, ready to rip you to shreds with a broken bottle. I know there's no stopping you, but let's at least make this quick. I'm only here for the speed. If it's money, I'm, I don't want it. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not going to steal this guy's spare change. Kunota Writer is the name on uh, unfinished homework. Oh, so his name is Kuno. It's from two years ago. Glossy erotica covers the wall, wrinkled from moisture. Eww. Lieutenant, I've located psychoactive substances on this table. A phone book lies open on the table, covering a stack of utility bills. Right next to it, in plain sight, sits a small bottle of amphetamine, conveniently equipped with a straw. Good. Confiscated. The minuscule amount of amphetamine doesn't interest the lieutenant in the slightest. He listens instead to something in the other room. You pocket the bottle as if it were the most natural thing in the world. Don't wait. Celebrate! Blast that shit right here! Take inventory of it once this boring table shit is done! Blast it before you face the beast, De Reuter. You're going to need the encouragement. I don't think I am. The air stinks with something sour. A bundle of clothes heaped on the bed, a stained parka, some towels and a duvet, some socks even. In the dark, it looks like a nest. Hold up, Lieutenant, look at that pile of clothes. Mm-hmm. The Lieutenant has covered his nose. Slowly reach out your hand. Something underneath there is breathing. He doesn't give a shit that you're a cop. Stop your hand now or you're gonna die. It's not too late. No one's going to blame you for backing out. You don't have to do this. Just get out. Keep extending your hand towards the pile. Your hand touches a greasy duvet covered in cigarette burns and ketchup stains. You hear a growl. There's something alive underneath. It's deep in suffering somehow. Pull the blanket off. You see a 60-year-old fat red-headed man passed out from large amounts of alcohol and God knows what else. The smell of shit rises from his mouth. 
You don't have to take him down. He's already down. Kim, is this thing even alive? I'm afraid it is. Look, it moves. He points to a fleshy lump sticking up from the other end of the blanket. The limb seems to be twitching. The look, the other foot, is camouflaged by a striped sock bearing the name Max Tor on the sole. Three toes are poking out of a hole. A groan rises from the man's throat, dry like a death rattle. He's trying to say something, even in his sleep. Well, I've got a shit ton of perception, so let's, let's see if I critically fail. I did not. The man groans once again, but his tongue keeps failing him. It's impossible to make out the syllables. A hand emerges from the blanket, trying to gesticulate something. And then it da dawns upon you, clear and surreal. Pigs. He's trying to call you pigs. What? What did you just say? His hand falls back on the bed, limp and defeated. A loud snore escapes his mouth. He's asleep again. At least he got to say his piece. Is this thing, is this Kuno's father we're seeing? Judging by the color of his hair, I would say yes. The lieutenant's right. The man's unwashed hair bears a familiar ginger tone. Even the hair on his chest is coppery. The light from the window falls into his half-open eyes. There's still plenty to be scared of here, just not what you thought. Doesn't look like he's gonna fuck anyone up anytime soon. No, it really doesn't. This looks very hard to recover from. This man won't be feeding his family anytime soon. Not that he was, but at least he won't be beating his son. A pair of half-open bug eyes is staring back at you from the dark, empty, and frozen. From the dark, empty, and frozen. It's clear that the person behind them is not awake. His half-open eyes give him the look of a dead man. But he's in there, and not enjoying himself. What happened to his eyes? <clears throat> Can't you tell? It happens to be exceptionally committed substance abusers. They fall asleep with their eyelids still open. Not a pretty sight. He'll sleep this off. I know this shit. Suddenly the man starts growling. Three words manage to escape his mouth along with strong stench of alcohol. F fucking pigs. It looks like he's trying to communicate. Maybe we should help him out somehow? What is there to do? We could turn him on his side so he doesn't choke in his vomit, but he's already on his side. Poor guy. We could take him to the Remedy or St. Baptiste, but he doesn't have money for medical services. The almshouse would turn him down. They don't do charity for people who are trying to kill themselves. Besides... He'll be dead in a few years, months, weeks. Well, that's that. <laughs> Later, man. Now, I'm torn what to do with the meth. Do I confiscate it and really sort of destroy Kuno's trust or give it to him in the hope there's something that can be done with it and with him what is the okay so preptide has the same effect speed how convenient somebody equipped this tiny bottle of amphetamines with a straw it's the lorry man speed on the go Okay. A reel of magnetic tape. Noted. Also, a fucking gun. Can I talk to Kunoas? Are you trying to sneak up on me? Come to slit my throat in my sleep. Apparently she doesn't like people standing behind her back. Please come to take me out. Trying to snuff me out. If anything, you're afraid she'll take you out one day. No. Why would you even say that? Then why are you sneaking up on me like that? It's not a good idea to scare me, pig. Not a good idea at all. Jesus. Unfortunately, I'll have to walk all the way around before I can go talk to Kuno and deal with the amphetamine. Oh, it's nine in the morning. I do believe the chef of the Whirling and Rags is there. So I can talk to him about the secret borscht. And then I can talk to Gart about how the Whirling in Rags is part of the uh, secret, uh, the doomed commercial district. Fuck, there's Kuno here! I took care of the drug situation. Alright, so you got Kuno's Kilo. Here's how we do it. First you give Kuno's Kilo, then Kuno gives you half back. That's how we split it. It's the best way. Street way. Aren't you gonna ask how I got past your dad? 
Word on the street is you sent your little friend in dressed as a hooker, distraction style. That's some sick shit. He nods approvingly to Kim. Not a single muscle moves on the man's face. Kuna wants to hear all about it, but first we split the kilo. Then we shoot the shit. Hmm. By kilo, you mean gram, right? Kuno knows what Kuno means. Kuno means gram. I'm keeping it. You don't need more drugs. You're 12. All right. Kuno, you try that sneaky pig shit on him. Kuno's got brains. This shit doesn't surprise Kuno. So Kuno's going to give you one more chance. Know this pig. Shit is major. Major fucking choice, pig. Kuno won't take this shit lightly. The piece is a moving pig. This is fucking domino shit. Not like he thinks, but you can feel it. Somehow this will change things. Tick, 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 tick. Okay, but just be smart about this. All right, now we're talking. Ooh, that's heavy. Out comes another similar file. Here you go. More than half in there. Kuno's fucking honorable like that. There's no movement on the lieutenant's face as he stares intently at the trash container. Now tell me, how the fuck are you still alive, pig? Um... Um, there's a textbook in there with your name on it in the apartment. Yeah? So fucking what? It says Kuno. Not Kuno. Kuno de Reuter. Fuck you talking to Kuno about that kitty shit. I like it. Kuno de Reuter. He's trying to fuck you again. Fucking uh, fuck out of here. Kuno knows it's fucking lame. That's why Kuno changed it. Kuno can change his name into anything. Gonna change my name into... Mm -hmm. Don't change your name into that, Kuno. Kuno, I met your dad. Yeah? You do some Sambo shit sneak in? Is the hooker thing real? Um. Uh, Kuno, your dad is half dead alcoholic. He was sleeping under some clothes. What? His posture changes. The swaying rooster motion stops for a second. Then he gets it going again, reorienting himself. Fuck right, Kuno's dad was of sleeping like a bum. Kuno told you Kuno's dad doesn't fucking give a shit about anything. Fucking breaking and entering shit. That's nothing to Kuno's dad. You got lucky, pig. Kuno knew this. Kuno's fucking violent fiend dad's been drinking hard lately. Kuno knew you had a way in. Narrow window. Kuno window. Whatever scary thing he might have been, now he's nothing. Yeah, Kuno's dad is fucking nothing. Fucking coma shit. Stroke shit. Kuno's dad's a fucking violent. He's had a stroke many times. Shit. Kuna's gonna have one too. Gonna be just like Kuno's dad. Speed shit. Crime shit. Fucking on the bed. Kuno's gonna go out like Kuno's dad. River Shoal Whist style. Stop saying all this sad shit, Kuno. There is a touch of grief there. Fuck you talking about sad. Kuno's got hard shit. Death shit. Nothing shit. I mean, you don't have to turn into that. Get your fucking nun ass out of here before Kuno fucks it dead. Mmm. You think because you brought Kuno one gram of speed to friends now? Turn into... Kuno, turn into shit. Kuno is... Kuno is that shit. If he doesn't stop soon, he's going to collapse from exhaustion. He's red all over. Kuno won. You won, Kuno. The relief is palpable. The little hat jumps up and down behind the fence. He did not win. There's a crack in there now, and it's spreading across the face of his certainty. I looked around in there. It's not the easy life you've got in that apartment. Fuck do you know about Kuno's life? Kuno's got plans. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, we got plans. Six meters above ground, below piping before the war, the collapsed remains of the Martinez storm drain system. There are two stolen flashlights with piles of batteries next to them, besides two bedrolls in the dark, an opening into the lower tunnels. There were tons of unpaid utility bills. Fuck, right there was. Fucking three years of some shit. Let me guess, Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit about them. Yeah, that's right. Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit about that electricity and light shit. Just wants to pound on people and drink. That's no place to live. There's gotta be somewhere, somewhere else. That's right. It's a shithole. Kuno's gonna move underground. Le Royaume shit. Ancient shit. Kuno's gonna live in a fucking catacomb. Okay. Business concluded. Don't mind me. I'm just gonna... Oh. Huh. I thought when, uh, when, um, ooh, four uses left. I thought when, um, uh, Kim was looking at the trash bin, that was his way of saying, please throw that out. Just get rid of it. But nah, I've just got some fucking speed. 
I wonder if I could sell this at the uh, at the pawn shop. Just just selling drugs, ain't no thing. Um, ah yes, the cook. Leo said you're friends with Manana. Is that true? The mention of Manana gets his attention. He smiles and delivers a whole slew of unfamiliar words and lively gestures. Then he falls silent again. They're friends. What's in that borscht you're making there? The man says a couple of sentences in that strange language of his and then seems to wait for you to speak. I'm pretty sure he asked you a question. He doesn't know your language. You can just say something cool in return. Mercury rising. The man looks at you, then at the soup. His face lightens up. He picks up a bottle from the shelf. Barsks. Needs more vodka? Okay, so it's vodka that keeps the men happy and in good spirits. Clever move by the union. Of course, vodka. Now that makes it a very special vorscht indeed. Turn it up and then ask him for yourself. No. No vodka. Turn fingers counterclockwise. Cut it. Cook gives you a long, disappointed look, then turns the stove off and seems to wait for you to speak. I don't think I need to say anything else. Stay masculine, man. Fuck, how many skill... Four skill points! Baby Jesus. All right, I still have to help the uh, cryptozoologist. The smallest church in Sensei. Uh, yeah, the church is... Actually, my love. Things are really bad with it. Cool. He, does, he really does sound like he thinks that it's a little cool. Uh, God, I saw another thing. I have to warn you, I may have discovered that the whirling is part of the doomed commercial area. What? Why would you say that? We're at a completely different address from that whole thing. Wait, so you know the curse? Everyone knows about it! The whirling is listed on the intercom outside. It's one of the businesses in Building B. You should get your wiring fixed. I tried to call and couldn't reach you. I've been working here for a long time. That intercom has never been used by the whirling. Um... The, er the Whirling was once the East Delta Pinball Arcade before it failed. It's only a matter of time before the Whirling fails, too. Nah, I'll give him hope. Perhaps Whirling could escape the curse. Does this look like part of the doomed commercial area? I'm sorry, doomed commercial art! This pre-revolutionary tile work, these high ceilings, the nice rooms. Well, most of the rooms. For 14 years, man, that's how long I've worked here. I've kept this place up through hail and through sleet. Fuck me if some doom ghost... He's done a fine job, too. Though he's spoken of the place dismissively before, the hostel is actually very important to him. You really care about this place. Yeah, it's slowly growing on me again. It's beautiful in its own way, especially for this neighborhood. I've been trying to keep it that way, even if it is part of the do that damn doomed commercial area. You shouldn't be so worried about the label, you know. I don't place much stock in the curse and so on, but the label frightens the clientele. Who wants to stay the doomed hostel? Who owns this place? Some real estate management company. They never come around here just to collect money from afar. Honestly, I think some money laundering might be involved. Who named it the Whirling and Rags? I'm sure as hell wasn't the real estate company. Was it you? You look surprised? What? It's a great name. I know. Cafeteria managers come up with great names too. It's from a song. Hail Holy Queen by the Ateneas. Hail Holy Queen of the Sea. You're Whirling and Rags. You're vast and you're sad. Good pick. What about the other cafeterias you manage? What about them? One is a basement dive frequented by chain-smoking communists. I can't tell you how sick I am of Krasmazov and Ignis Nilsson and all those old ghosts. You're guessing there aren't that many others. Well, good luck to you with this place. Luck has got nothing to do with it. I need to think about where I'm going to place those pinballs. I have a feeling they're going to help against the doom. It's implied. All right, later, Gart. I wonder what would have happened if I had sung the smallest church to Jean. Alright, let's see if I can out-drama the, uh, the drama lass. Alright, alright, alright. Keep it together, keep it together. Um... Right, I need the... Insane mesh tank top and the uh, party dragon silk robe. Okay, I think I've maxed out my drama here. Damn, about as dramatic as they get. Oh, right, I forget the bow knot is worth two drama. 
oh, I am totally willing to change my clothes to look as stupid as possible. There, there is no limit to how to how stupid I will let myself look. Ma'am. Hello, officer. What brings yeah. you up here again? It was the love that did him in. <sighs> Who? What? Dear God, you've been lied to. She could have killed her lover and lied to everyone. She's not candid at all. She's smoking mirrors. Will of the wisps. She probably didn't give you her real name either. Why would she? Arrest her immediately before the further she further entangles you in a web of lies. You know, your real name isn't Kla Shamandu. I agree. You wouldn't give us your real name. Not when people are after you. Okay. Tighten it. You've got her. A lot of lies now. Okay, yes, it's not. It's not my name. Good. You can tell me the truth. You log your work every week. It's all transmitted to common sir. I couldn't just beg you not to enter my name, so I lied. Like I lied before, like I did at LCSB. I have to lie all the time, and I'm so tired of it. She's not lying anymore. She really is very tired. Her metabolism is failing her. The afterglow of whatever narcotic she's been taking is wearing off. Was the passport bullshit too? The one that you keep hidden? No. It's submerged in a plastic buoy on the coast in the reeds. It does. It just doesn't say Klosh Amandu. It says Anok Meijer Schmidt. Falsified documents, passport, and visa given to me by my employer. I can't even really use them. My employer probably leaked my name, Meijer Schmidt, to hurt me. Why would they do that? I didn't show up to rendezvous. They don't take that lightly. I didn't show up because I was afraid they'd do something to me. The job was finished. I was a liability. She fears an arrest right here and now. This has not This has been an awful turn of events for her. Where's the buoy? Tell me your real name. Katrazine Alexis. <laughs> this smile on her face is timid, almost painfully so. Could it mean Clash is an alacronym for Katrazine Alexis? Uh, it's an abbreviation. It was a sentimental thing. I wanted to be more me here this time, so I used my nickname. Who gave it to you? A teenage boy a million years ago. Finally, we meet. Ketterzine. She nods. Her round eyes meet yours. They seem moist from the wind on the roof. Where's this buoy? West of the boardwalk in the reeds on the coast there. I put it there when I first arrived. Haven't been there since. I'm not sure I could find it even now. It's useless, really. The wind rises, so do the hairs on your back. Somewhere west, small bubbles rise from a plastic ball floating in the water. What's happening? Long, spindly arms are spinning the buoy around, turning it, inspecting it like a magic eight ball, trying to find a way to snap it open. Nothing is useless. We should check out the buoy. Are you even Miss Orange 37? I am. They could never take my sash and scepter away from me. Yes, they can! For lying! Enough. Ready for the damage. She knows you're grilling her. Kim, why haven't we arrested her yet? There may be grounds here, at least for an extended detention. Let's change the subject for the time being. You are. This is not the end of this. We'll talk later. So, yeah, all of that, a very well-crafted deception. But even so, I don't feel a cause to arrest her. Um, I also happen to know that if you don't arrest her, she gives you a hint later on in the game. If we had not succeeded the visual calculus role with her window, um, you would do well to keep her around. But... That'll do for this episode of Disco Elysium. Next time, we're going to go talk to Everard and tell him about the signatures and hope that he doesn't know. <laughs>